It sparks flashes of brilliance, prompts bold moves, and threads our wildest ideas together. So what exactly is the student spirit? Well, it's the part of us that's forever curious. A mindset where anything is possible. Rise new things! Keeps you sharp between the ears. And pays just a little more attention. It isn't afraid to make a statement. Changes the world, one step at a time. And squeezes our egos, insecurities and fears into tiny little metaphorical balls before crushing them. The curious don't just think, they do. Stay curious. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are so glad to have you as part of our community tonight. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and distributed live stream by entering this virtual meeting room. You give your consent to be recorded and distributed by the Student Hotel Vienna and other third parties. If you prefer to not be recorded, please turn off your camera and microphone and or go to the Facebook live video feed, the link to which has been placed in the chat room. For a better experience, Please turn off your microphone and set your video to gallery view. Every week, we are ungently reminded that, quote, the student experience, unquote, is inextricably tied to, quote, staying curious, unquote. Camila Dosamantes Curcio and Pedro Avila Diaz Fariga are two prime examples of this practice. Both arrived at the Student Hotel Vienna from the Americas with the intention of sharing their perspectives on artistic practice or as the student hotel might call it, curiousness. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the duo's most renowned project has to do with North American corn. The food staple has traveled the world around and become the key ingredient for many celebrated national dishes. The project happens in the kitchens of the student hotel Vienna, where Camila and Pedro prepare and share corn dishes with other international residents. As their project's title, Devouring Cultures, aptly implies, cooking and sharing of one's favorite meals is perhaps the sine qua non of familiarity. You are what you eat, as the saying goes. Pedro has been studying at Vienna's Academy of Fine Arts, and Camila has been studying at the Academy of Fine Arts at Macerata, Italy, they are here on their Erasmus study abroad year. They both are currently studying at the Academy of Fine Arts at Mexico City. So live from the Student Hotel, welcome very much, Pedro. Welcome very much, Camila. Thank you so much. And uh, I have the privilege tonight, I'd like to bring to your attention that uh, my dear colleague, Lynn Ryman is here with us. She uh, is uh, co-moderating and she is the Director of Partnerships and uh, Events here at the Student Hotel. Thanks for having me, Simeon. <laughs> so I'd like to begin with you, Pedro. Please tell us, so I know you're from, both of you are from Mexico City. You grew up in a family that specialized in framing art, framing other special mementos like football jerseys, things or wedding photos, things that are really special. Yeah. People would frame them and put them up on their walls. They came to your family to get that. Tell us about this experience growing up where you're always framing someone's special picture so they can display it 
in a, in a, in a, in a special place in their home and how that drew you into the idea of uh, pursuing a career in fine art. Yes. Well, since I was a kid, I started looking to so many images that they were putting inside these frames. And it, it's not only the, um, as you said, not, not only like high art or high class art, it's also like um, common pictures from the family. So I reached a point when I was like so interested in these like things that the people worship and they put inside the, this frame. And then I was like thinking like, I, I want to, to do something that can belongs inside these frames. And I was start copying some stuff and some faces or some things. And then I, I tried to pursue like, okay, I want to, to, to create, um, at that point I didn't call it art. I, I just was like, I just think like something that belongs to the frames. And then I, I start like really getting into the path of um, being in a real career and to learn like how to develop this kind of, um, you know, um, I don't know, optic sense of touching things. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, uh, what talented people we have here at the student hotel. Exactly. So Camilla, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe even mention how you two met? Uh, okay. So I started dancing when I was two and a half years old. I was copying my sister that was in a flamenco class. And uh, the owner of the school told my mom, like, she's very young, but if you want, she can take classes. So uh, I grew this passionate love towards dancing for my whole life. I, I had a lot of opportunities to travel the world, world and study from a lot of great choreographers. And um, when I ended high school and I started um, doing dance as a career in Los Angeles, I got injured. So when I got back to Mexico, I started drawing and then I took a leap and decided to do the exam into the art university and I got in and I fell in love with the variety of opportunities that you can explore within art. So it's been a, a great process. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. And would you mind, men Simeon mentioned something that actually caught my attention during the intro. He uh, said something about devouring cultures and um, as far as I know from you also, you, you tackle the subject very strongly. Maybe you would like to say some things about that? Yes, yeah, so uh, this project started out because Pedro and I had worked in, with, with corn and the subject of corn in different uh, stages of our life and in different medias. But uh, we brought corn from Mexico to here to uh, like thousands of years ago happened here and since the corn got established in many different cultures it was like our way of of demonstrating our love towards corn in in a mexican perspective and how to share it with others so we we started doing this cooking sessions with other peoples from different types of of cultures and it's our way to understand how we produce culture, how we all share uh, in a specific language, in this case, English, and then uh, different ingredients that we all share and have in common, but how we use these types of food in a different way and we start combining them together. So at the end, we are all one, even if though we are different, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I'm, I'm curious if, uh... Lynn and I came to your uh, one of your devouring culture uh, dinners. What would you make for us? Well, it all depends on our cravings, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But of course, something with corn, corn flour, probably. Okay, uh, so what I'm thinking, you'd make us tacos or something Mexican. Is that yeah, right? The first thing about corn is that most of our food is made out of corn. So if we speak about quesadillas, enchiladas, chilaquiles, tlacoyos, mm -hmm. uh, tortillas, everything is corn, just in a different presentation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they are basically all tortillas. Okay. <laughs> thicker or thinner. So that's the point. What, what do you put inside this uh, tortilla and it becomes a taco? Or if you put a lot of sauce and you deep fry the tortillas, then it's a chilaquil. So we're like just exploring with this, um, the, the, the same route that it's corn and 
in this specific case, indigenous corn or maize. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Indigenous corn. Maybe you would like to mention just briefly what this means. So in indigenous corn, uh, in Mexico, we have a great variety of corn. Uh, corn first comes from the Teocintle, that it was very, very small. And then uh, they started doing another process to make it bigger. And so we have lots of varieties of purple corn, pink corn, yellow and and here because of the soil and because it's this type of corn yellow corn that it's a little bit more um easier to adapt to the climate here mm -hmm. that's why the presentation here it's it's the typical yellow corn but in peru and in africa they also have this indigenous types of corn that are more colorful, a little bit more flavor. Like in Mexico, we, we love this type of corn flour that it's, uh, we, we call it blue, but it's actually like blue purplish mm. and it has a different taste than the normal one. So it's like a dark corn. <laughs> Very interesting because I never knew there's any other thing than yellow corn. <laughs> but I think I j jumped through a hoop. Like, did you guys meet through this project or how did you two meet? We met. Uh, in the art, fine art university in Mexico. From the beginning, we were a great match, friends, and we started working out. Uh, in, he invited me to do a project that is one of his homes. Mm -hmm. It's called Rio Negro, and it's it's a house that is like a treasure treasure chest. It's filled with objects. So we were like archaeologists in the way, but also like little children playing around, seeing what we could find. And it has been a great journey because I learned from him a lot and I think vice versa. And yeah. it's, it's a great teamwork of, and then with other friends like Arturo Benitez, he's also yes. a, a great member of our group. Like it's this house where everything is magical, <laughs> you know, it, everything flows. Yeah. yeah. Like, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds very, very interesting. I would definitely visit that, especially I love looking at many objects. <laughs> I think that's like my place to be. You're more than welcome. I will definitely take you up on that. Yes. So uh, let's go, uh, Pedro, I want to talk to you first about, uh, first on our list, we have Disruptivo. Yeah. Did I say that right? This is your, uh, one of your first artworks. Yeah. That, you, that you did and it was occasioned by your insomnia so yeah. you were spent these sleepless nights instead of just laying in bed you started making these soundtracks yeah the thing is that here in in the rio negro it's a place that it's in 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 an avenue so we always have sounds like a lot of sounds and when you finally want to sleep or you want to rest a little bit, you don't have the silence that we have here in Vienna. Like here in Vienna, it's so quiet. And even in Sundays, you don't have anything to do just to rest and like chill and go to the river and drink a beer. I don't know. But in, in Mexico, we're always partying. But it's also kind of like a punishment because we don't have silence. We have a lot of sounds that keeps you like going and you, you can't really rest and you can't really like just enjoy your your own thoughts, you know? So mostly cars, honk, yeah, yeah. horns. It's, Avenue, it's a place where they are all, they're heavy, heavy duty cars. Okay. Pass through, so they even move the house. So you have like these invasions of sounds that keeps you uh -huh. going on all night. We listen to roosters, we listen to a lot of dogs, we listen to, I mean, there's a lot of vibes going on and a lot of things going on. And so I decided to work with these sounds and to do something. So I took a boot phone from the from the streets and I turned it into a speaker and then I built a, um, um, it's a CD album for, it has seven tracks and these tracks are a mix with the, the sounds that keeps me awake at night. And then I, I put them in, in the format of Cytrans that it's like the most uh, quick and aggressive sound that I can find in the, in the different types of music. So it's uh, basically at 140 BPMs. So it's like really, really quick. And I see a resemble, uh, resemblance with the uh, 
fast the fast cars that are going through and the the dogs and everything that it's like just going and going and going and they are also sounds that keep repeating itself like every day in the mm -hmm. normal routine so it's the same with the electronic music like you have a sound and you repeat it and then you just uh put different sounds on it but basically it's the same bass um so that that was like the point of that uh project and uh can do we have a sound here do we have a uh, any uh a sound track to this no we don't okay so unfortunately we can't hear this but uh so tell me in other words was this your revenge against those sounds or yes, did it sure. yeah. yeah that's why i call it yeah that's why i call it disruptive and the point of this the um, the the sculptor it was to put it in, in places at night and reproduce the sound and just like do another different sound that keeps invading these invasive sounds. Ah, so you played a sound yeah. against the sounds. Exactly. Oh, it, it, do we have that picture of that, that uh, can, of, the, of the phone? Yeah, that's in the middle of a river, that it's the same river that goes by the home, but mm -hmm. this is the part where you can actually see the river because if you go to Rio Negro, uh -huh. the river is down the home. And it's okay. going in tubes. Uh -huh. so, and so that we see right there, that's the water. To, to my home. Uh -huh. and the water's green. The cover of the, um, the um, album. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's green because it has a lot of leaves. Okay. okay. And they don't use it to... That, that boat, it's abandoned because mm -hmm. they, they are not fishing over there or they are not doing anything with that river. It's just... Uh, we have dogs and some things like that, but it's not a, a, an actual... Uh, functional river mm -hmm. it's just uh, a canal that goes through Xochimilco to the city mm -hmm. yeah. and so this this telephone that's yeah. what that is put a book telephone <clears throat> and it's also a speaker and it has a usb port inside and it's reproducing the the cd for mm -hmm. the city it's 40 minutes okay and why in the boat uh, because i found this boat and also it's it's about the things that are not supposed to happen. Like nobody can enter into my place, but the sound crosses barriers. Sure. And this is a, a boat that doesn't have a, a useful state over there. So I use this unuseful boat to make something useful. And I put it in a unuseful thing. It's like going back and forward with the things exactly. that are not. Recycling. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so uh, the insomnia has gotten better. Uh, in a way, I think at the beginning when I came to Vienna, it was working out because it changed my whole schedule. But then with the whole Corona situation, we start losing control again about time and everything. And I think that the the first thing that got us into this idea of making devouring cultures, it was because it was the week of Ramadan. So to me, it was really interesting that I look at the kitchens and the kitchens were like all lighted and filled with vibes at night. And I was like, oh, yeah, they are like cooking something at night. And then I discovered that, OK, it's something that you only do at night and when the sun comes down. And it's the same uh, thing that I was doing with my sounds and boot. And it was like, OK, we, we have a relationship in the night with all the friends. So Absolutely. that was amazing. For and just us. a curiosity. Have you played Disruptivo to uh, for Camila? Yes, yes, of course. I'm a yes, big she was part fan of, of the process. Yes. And, and uh, what do you think about it? I am a big fan of it. I think his way of understanding sound, because it, he takes quotidian sounds and he transforms it into a beat. So there's rhythm and and you really feel the sounds of Mexico City. Like you hear the typical sounds that annoy you in the street or you're sometimes in class and you hear Se compran colchon, and it makes us laugh. And in a way, it's like, oh, let's let's we have to make them go away so we can concentrate and focus on the class again, you know. Yeah. So it's amazing, like his way of thinking and perceiving sound and putting because it. I know I understand that it's called disruptive, but at the end, I it makes me enjoy this disruptive that's this. the irony right yes, yeah, exactly. irony. yes. wow that's uh, uh impressive <laughs> definitely very impressive it also reminds you of home doesn't it For sure. <laughs> especially in a very quiet city like vienna <laughs> yes, 
it, but it's lovely to have this peace and quiet yeah. and sometimes the crows yeah did still you have the the invasion of sound over here like we have the the polizai sirens and yes. if you're in your room you can listen to the ravens and you can listen to a lot of things and the construction there it's a city that yes. doesn't stop the same as mexico we're all, always constructing something and here i see like a, a a mirror you know it's like a different part of of sounds over here but yet still we have the same way of understanding sound that sound crosses barriers and yes something that invades your brain yes. yeah. and so uh just one other thing there is a mule behind your head can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that uh, yeah yeah it's a uh, it's a project that i developed um it started in mexico uh -huh. so in mexico we have these mules and also the mule it's a thing that they call for the people that traffic stuff inside their bodies so i was using this same idea of putting uh, something inside uh <laughs> a stuffed animal or a, an object so this is a speaker also that okay I mainly, I mainly do speakers uh -huh. so this is a speaker and i put a soundscape inside of it and then i use the um, the pre-hispanic uh, exhibit inside the belt museum and i put this uh, mule inside the museum and i just uh, reproduce the sounds that you will listen in mexico mm -hmm. do we have the photo to that in the, of the of the mula in the museum this was uh so the, the which museum in mexico city no it's here in vienna oh, it's here this is in vienna yeah okay. yeah impressive and you uh they yeah, liked it so much they said come bring it here oh i just went there and put it <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do it <laughs> that's part like yeah. the with the whole COVID situation and everything, it was so complicated to get an actual like form to do it. So I was like, if you want to do something, then you should try to do it. And if they stop you in the way, then you stop it. But if they don't, at the end, we, we made the project and everything was like, good. And how long was it there for? It was for one hour. Oh, okay. The, the, people, the people over there, over there uh, they, they, they actually, actually care. They were, I mean, they, I mean they, don't, they don't care something inside the museum. The, the, the policemen over there were like interested and they were just like watching, but they didn't tell us anything. They were like, it's cool to, to do it. Yeah. So the student experience. Yeah. Sometimes we always say it's easier to, talk, to ask for forgiveness and permission. <laughs> one, one last question about Mula before I, uh, we go to Camila. So I wanted to ask you, is it um, in any way offensive? I mean, when you talk about a mula, yeah, and a mule, and then I think, oh, okay, of these drug traffickers who are ingesting cocaine or something and to go across the borders, then you kind of ingesting this this uh, light you said it was. Mm -hmm. and is this considered offensive or is it, how, how would you, I don't imagine you'd, uh, give, you'd show this to children or does it matter? I always use things that look childish to speak about bigger things. Okay. Because it's also like when, when you're playing with toys and everything, it's a way of understanding the real world. So this is more maybe a metaphor or something. Maybe somebody get offended, but it's not about offending anyone. It's just about that. I, I see like a lot of reality shows and things showing like the, when they stop the people in the airport and they are managing uh, different ways to, to do their bad business. But at the end, they are producing sculptors. So that was the part that I was interested. Like they, they have these avocados and you cut the avocado and in the middle it's full of cooking. So it was like, that's clever. So that's the same clever idea to, to do a sculptor that it's speaking for, or that has a, a different utility. You know, but all, we always think as a sculptor as something that doesn't have a utility. It's just mm -hmm. something to put in the middle of, the, of a room. Bro. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting how you see things from a different perspective also. Yeah, I, we yeah. have to, to, to live with this prejudge. Mm -hmm. so it's better if you use them in a, in a good way than if you are just against that and you are trying to reject the idea that we don't have a, um, a bad context. But it's not, Mexico is not only about violence, it's also about creative people and people that, that try to overcome these, these um, ideas. That of course. Have yeah. You know? Of course. Let's hope the message gets across that. I mean, it's in general, art is there to spark discussion, whether negative or not, and to challenge perspectives. So 
uh, it's nice that you're doing it at the same time showing that there's more to it than just that. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Camila. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about your your project, the project maybe you were working on now, maybe for all who don't know, I'm actually wearing here a pin uh, designed by Camila. Maybe you'd like to say something to this. Yes, so uh, I created this icon that is this, it's, it's an anthropomorphic figure. It's not a human being, it's not an animal. It's just this figure. And it has, uh, the eyes are closed. Like, like, like or I think it's, it represents like this way of thinking and process of reaching peaceful and mindfulness. And it's covering part of the face with a corn. But this icon, um, I did a sculpture that is encapsulating an indigenous corn inside. So this, this figure has a corn and it's eating a corn. So it's this process of, mm -hmm. I think like this process of- I see a picture. Yes, exactly. It's this, this little- <laughs> do, you do you have a name for it? No, no, I haven't, I haven't figured it out. You have to find a name for it because I think this can become a very, very popular, famous icon. I, I mean, I love it. It's so cute. But uh, yeah, sorry, continue. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. I, I think I haven't found the right name yet. But uh, definitely it's this way of thinking of we are what we eat in a way, but we also what we understand is we consume something and then we process and it's it's this digestion and it's this process of life and death so the sculpture that i made is a perfect re representation of this because it's covered by resin that is a plastic that will last a long time but the inside that is corn is actually dying so it's still in this process of life and death and it's, it will last for a few years, but it's not going to last like when it, it all started. Yes. Are you trying to also showcase that life is not indefinite yes. by this? Yes, definitely. I think, I think it's a process. It's important, it's important when it ends. ends. Mm. It's the beginning of something new and it's so the closure. No, and mm. <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> we yeah. <laughs> we cherish cherish life and we enjoy life mm -hmm. at the maximum so because we all know that we don't live forever so we have Absolutely. to it's a wonderful perspective really wonderful yeah, yeah. so uh, i wanted to ask if we could take a look again at la cotorra at the video we saw from the beginning tell us what is the what does this mean this means the corn or la cotorra is well this is a name that they normally use for a type of bird, but it's also a, a word that we say when somebody chit chats a lot. Okay. Yes. It's like kekotorra. Yes. <laughs> Gossip a lot or chit chat. But in Japanese way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay, so this project it all started because in Rio Negro, we were doing this project of. Um, finding objects and giving a little bit more of space in in the house but we started planting also corn inside so uh with the corn leaves i decided to make some masks like recreating this metaphorical way of sensation and experience the home because inside there was no light and it was filled with objects so i started playing around with taking my sight away and it was like the first um process of playing around without sight and having a a mask that is very soft very comfortable to wear and it the smell is also nice so it, it opens your perception into a very different um uh, place let's take a look at it
was uh, you were you dancing. Yes. And tell us so the 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 kotora, the chit chatty person is is the music or it is the corn or is it you or well uh, we were that uh, Pedro helped me film this and when we were filming we were putting songs on and when this happened we found this song that it's from my grandfather's era that's called La, La Cotorra ah, okay. and we fell in love with it because it it sounds like a like Mexican, Mexican traditional song very playful playful yes and I think it was perfect for that moment so that's why we decided and also like the the figure in the mask reminded me a little bit of of a bird so it was a great fit mm -hmm. I think. And, the, and the choreography the gestures that doesn't have anything to do with the traditional dance no not at all it, it, it was all about finding this movement of improvisation and breathing in and breathing out with the mask and focusing on how my body will react when I breathe in and when I breathe out, rather than um, focusing on the typical movements of any type of dance. It was a little bit more of perception, perception. and showing how my perception being inside this mask was. Mm -hmm. And tell me what I'm kind of curious because I know that you were at the highest levels of dance practice when you were in New York and Los Angeles. What would your colleagues think about this if they saw this? Well, I have no clue. I've shown this to some of my friends and they like it and they laugh and they have fun with it. But it's totally different from my technical uh, background that I have. It, it, I think when I got into a point that it was too much, I, I was dancing so many hours and it was so many, it was like very formal that when I ended that process, I just wanted to a little bit of forget about those things in a way that to, to regain this joyful, being a kid, playful, forgetting about this formal stuff as i understand it that uh, for dancers obviously especially for young women that they also have uh, problems with eating that they have uh, self-image problems i imagine it must be a lot of stress does any of that figure into what you're talking about and also the devouring cultures well uh definitely it was the game changer for me because I experienced this whole ambiance of um, challenging yourself and being in competition with other amazing dancers. So it was, for me, it was more fulfillful, I think, to go back to just playing around, no matter if it goes good or not, or if I fall, or if I'm fatter or thinner, sure, sure. just enjoy yourself. And, and instead of focusing too much on what will they think, or am I good enough to be in the audition or to be in whatever. Sure. Sure. But it's also been a process of, it's been a long process of of understanding what, what do I want from life and what process of everyday routine do I want? Yes. It's, an, it's amazing. I mean, because, you know, uh, uh, of, of course we have to, uh, a young woman, a young man in front of us, but I mean, they have such uh, enormous life experience. Yeah, very so mature. So I mean, relaxed. Like Camila saying, you know, she was, uh, she's lived two lives, really. And uh, uh, this, um, without this experience, then she wouldn't have met Pedro, she wouldn't have gone into the visual, visual arts. So for all of us, it's very inspiring. And thank you for telling us about it. We, we really treasure your, uh, this, uh, these, these, these things that you tell us. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, um, I wanted to move on to, um, we have here the house that you're talking about, Rio Negro, the Black River. Tell us about, uh, tell us about this house, Pedro. So I understand this house is, nobody lives there. Now, actually, the, it's a graveyard for these old frames that you're, you're the third generation of a frame-making family, and that they ended up 
more or less dumping those frames in this house. It became came kind of like a, a frame yeah. graveyard. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the machines too. Like so, when we arrive, we 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 think that okay, we have a lot of materials to work on. That's where she started to do mask masks with the frames. Uh, but we also we with this other friend that it's called Arturo. We're we're working this place into a hopefully a workshop and a place for us to meet with different artists and curious people and to share like just how do we have fun inside this place that it's a big mess but we're having fun inside this mess and we're using it as a place to explore different mediums and different things and we're discovering things while we are like rearranging the space so at the beginning it was like kind of overwhelming but then we learn how to have fun inside this place and how to share it with different people and some some of them get into it and some of them them don't but it's part of the the deal of working with a new a new place and trying to recover the the essence of the house like this picture that you are looking it's um, the 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 picture that it, that it's up it's the real picture of of the home and the one that it's down it's a um, 3D model that can be made in Blender. So we we wanted to see how the house look when when it's completely empty, because it has this um, 50s style architecture. So for us it was like interesting just to see like the chimney and the windows and how does it works with the light and everything and the the digital mediums were like preparing us for for. How do we want the house to look in the future? So Pedro, I have a question right away. I see a window on the bottom. On the top, I don't see any window. So you're saying there's a window behind all of that stuff? A chimney and there's also like different things that are still hidden inside the home. Mm -hmm. And we are like rediscovering these new places. And while we are doing that, we are using the materials and the things that are I mean, if they work, we are just using the frames, but if they are broken or something, we're trying to build either sculptors or masks or toys or things to do with this material, because for us, it's not trash. It's more like a, a piece of our own history. And now we're part of the history of this place. So we're, we're just using the, the things that we have and we are like rearranging this, this place. And we use the name Rio Negro because actually we are living, the, the name of the street is Rio. It's an avenue, sorry. So it's Avenue Rio in, in Mexico. So, so. Uh, right here we see the corn and we see the frames. Yeah. So kind of a, everything all, all together. This is a real collage of all of your interests coming together. Yes, this was one mask that I started building first I wanted to represent visually the sensations that I had in the house. So of course, no sight if you put it on. And by using the frames, the frames mean this portraying of experience. And I really loved using different textures and mixing up because normally when you have a frame, you have a one frame that is all the same type of frame, either golden or brown or whatever, but I wanted to, to mix it up and just put them together because they create a different sensation. And also by playing around with the, of course, the corn leaves, and I also put some lychee leaves. That was my way of portraying my own sensations like human sensations inside the house so it's like a sensorial mask no question about the uh the authorship then this is yours camila yes. okay so and uh, pedro do we have are you making similar art or is it uh like like this one is this um this one this one is a process in which we were both intertwined because we we were talking about this house how it was first inhabited by humans and then when it was emptied by humans then they started uh, animals and in insects started inhabiting this space so we started talking about how 
it will it would be very funny if the human would change or turn into an animal and by using first of all the frame as a container of experiences and just as simple as just putting part of the frame to hit your face and transform you into into this other creature in other words the, the frame is it's a moving frame it's a living frame kind of like the corn dancing that we saw yes Let's have, uh, can we have a look at this video? Yes, of course. Or maybe if uh, we need more time, that's oh, okay. There it is. Very nice. Again, very playful, I would say. I love that because we also always say we like to play with a wink. Before we conclude, I actually have a question to you guys. You say that you um, collect different items from different places. So you're leaving Vienna soon. What did you collect from Vienna? And did you collect anything from Vienna? We've collected so many things from yeah. Vienna. <laughs> Do you even have place in your luggage for them? <laughs> We actually don't. We're trying to. We were we, we were talking about this yesterday. We were figuring out either to leave clothes behind and take our yes. objects rather than our own stuff because we we tend to have this importance towards the object and but we've collected everything from objects in the street that we find and we, we say like oh what is this or or that it has a different value. He's, he has been collecting also so many stickers and the yeah. crows, we, we were shocked that With in the plastic buildings. Crows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know why would they use them here? To to scare scare exactly. I, I would try to, be, to turn it into a speaker and to do a, la, a soundscape <laughs> of Vienna inside this crowd and reproduce it in Mexico. If you do this, then you have to definitely let us know because we have to show it around here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Indefinitely. But yeah, we have um, a lot of different things that caught our attention. But I think that the most important thing that we are taking from Vienna is friendship. Like we, we met a lot mm -hmm. of nice people and mm -hmm. people to share our thoughts and people that are in the same channel that we are. And that's like things that you are not expecting. You Maybe we, we have this expectation of museums and culture and uh, sound and everything, but you don't expect the people that you are meeting. So I think that we are grateful about it. And that's why we made this kind of events when we are like caring more about sharing things with people than just sharing our objects or things that we are collecting. Because at the end, most of the things that we are um, saving there are for, for future projects for, from Mexico mm -hmm. and they are not like, for here so the, the best thing it's like the people that we get to know yeah. that's really wonderful to hear and i'm glad you had this experience i have one last question before we finalize because um pedro and camilla actually hosted for us a workshop on sensory uh, multi-dimensional drawing like how you can draw your senses so seeing what you, of your art seeing what you do and also what you focus on you focus a lot on the sense sensations of someone you know yeah. so what would you say about 
like what advice would you give the general public about their sensory yeah, yeah. what advice yeah advice uh, yeah okay. like would you is there a point that you would like or a message you'd like to share with like the common person like me who doesn't really um is not very involved in art and the, these things what would you tell me regarding yeah the sensory uh developments okay so i think that it's very nice if you can allow yourself to open up to discover your own feelings and emotions and because nobody else can feel the way you're feeling nobody else would feel the pain if you have pain or if you are hungry you only can experience this so if you open up yourself to try to use other senses that you are, you're aware that you have because we use them every day but but you don't take that much focus on how how hearing or feeling or smelling things are it's an amazing way to discover so many things that you're not aware of and you also allow yourself to have fun in a different way yeah. because you you understand reality and perception in the normal way but when you try to do these things everything changes like your whole experience at the moment will will be different than than you're used to so i say, I say go for it aka be mindful that's what we hear a lot be more mindful of everything that's wonderful so tell us about your next plans i mean what are what are what's what's upcoming now you're leaving really soon which is very sad for for uh, for me and us here at csh but uh, tell us what you have planned are you coming back to Vienna? um well we're coming back to rio negro so our main goal is to to work in that place we're going back to quarantine so it's going to be really cool because we're going <laughs> to have this quarantine inside a place, place that allows to be playful and to still enjoy it you know so we're kind of excited in a way but we still like have this fear of the airport and the whole situation and yes. I can't really tell you, like, if I learned something about this situation is that you can't really make plans. Mm -hmm. You just have to adapt yourself every day and to change your goals and everything daily. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the point where we are right, right now. Just like maybe it's like improvising or something, but we, we just like to have fun wherever we are. So it doesn't matter if we are in Vienna or Mexico or i'm just flabbergasted by your 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 mindset you're so positive and so like really collected it's it's really incredible wonderful but how can we stay in touch with you i mean especially uh i would love to stay in touch with you so what's the best way to stay in touch with you well i think uh instagram we don't post that much but we definitely answer super quick uh also via email we answer and uh, anybody who wants to reach out is always welcomed. And we adore collaborating with people and meeting people. And if you guys come to Mexico, you have to come to us, of course. Yeah, do something <laughs> yeah. in Rio Negro. I, I didn't have a plan, but now I'm definitely going to plan to go to Mexico once everything calms down. That's great to know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it, it's going to be amazing. I think. Mexico has a lot of amazing things. Mm -hmm. We we will definitely try to come back to Vienna because we fell in love with the city and the yes. people and it's been a great experience. But our home is Mexico. Yeah. We would adore so it. Completely understandable. Yes. <laughs> so I uh, want to ask you what happens when you come back to this house that has been more or less abandoned to do whatever you want and then uh, you arrive there and then you start working or what happened yeah, yeah we're, we're doing everything since like the restoring and preparing the concrete like mm -hmm. we're making everything up there so we we're having fun like just from the root of the home and then trying to do something new with it and we we don't know actually how it's going to look out at the end but we're like excited just to to be part of the process and to be able to have these kind of places because also in mexico it's 
so complicated to really have a, a home like that. And for us, it's like we, we're like blessing in a way, you know. So for us, that's yeah. that's enough, and we're happy working. So. And do you think you would eventually make this your your home? Mm, yeah, I think it's already our home. It's already our place where we meet up with our friends, and it's the place where we love to share and always we are inviting people to go over there and there's always new people over there so that's really fun yes. and you never know what who's going to knock at your door and just come by because in mexico we have this like outgoing vibe and if i tell you like you want a beer we can go today to drink something or to drink a coffee or just to, to talk or to play a game yes. but hopefully it's going to be a place where where the people can find a shelter for their thoughts or anything you know just mm -hmm. to share ideas and to have a place where you feel safe uh -huh. and we still have a few minutes left and i wanted to ask uh both of you individually uh camila what what uh, does your future look like what are the you know what do you hope for in the future so you have a, a life as a dancer now you're doing a, a visual artist you're traveling around the world uh tell us what uh, what's in store for you well, it's a tough question because I think it's the unknown, mm -hmm. but I'm expecting a lot of uh, adventures, I think. Yes, that's the right mindset. Right? Yeah, definitely. If you expect it, you'll attract it. Yeah, yes, yes, that's uh -huh. true. And de devouring culture? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely in the future. I think until I die, I would like to continue this project. I love sharing ideas and food with people it's a great way to just sit on the table that, and share an amazing thing that is very simple and a necessity and it opens up a lot of amazing things so i think until i die i will keep doing this <laughs> well, i hope to be part of it i hope that Let we get to sit at your table yes uh i wanted to ask so has there ever ever been a time when one of your guests brought something that you really didn't want to eat yes well <laughs> okay so this this friend of ours she's from syria and she cooked um how do you say tripa oh belly Be and liver stomach liver liver? and uh, neck oh my lord so I, I since i was a kid i've actually been a little bit we say in spanish tikis mikis that means <laughs> yes piki with food. My sister, that she's a chef, she's, she has tried to make me open up myself a little bit more. But she gave, she gave me like this, <laughs> these things. And I was like, he was capturing the whole moment. He took yeah, all yeah. my faces from like a little I bit of disgust. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, it's actually kind of good. <laughs> oh, really? wow. Yes, yes. But I think we need to open up to new, new flavors, flavors. Even we think it might be disgusting it turns out it's good <laughs> uh, like you were telling lynn right that we open our senses up so we can live more right so we right right yes yes Yes, when you come to Mexico, you're going to have insects and you will love uh, them. Yeah. I know it's not a grasshopper in Thailand once, but I was a bit disappointed that it was covered in soy sauce. So I didn't oh, the no, in Mexico, they just put it in the pan uh, and with a, little bit, with a little bit of salt and lemon. And it's amazing. And we also have this um, gusano de maguey. What is that? Um, it's, it's a maguey worm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now you lost me. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but, but you will love it. It's, it. it's different than those, but this one tastes like butter. That's what I hear all the time, but I think it's about if, if I think if you cut it and prepare it differently and I don't see it alive before, maybe then, maybe then. But I will take your advice. I will try to step out of my comfort zone a little bit <laughs> try it. i will definitely try it once yes That's what yeah. I did and I fell in love with them yeah. yes <laughs> and pedro for you you're in the future what uh, what can we look forward to reading in the newspaper i actually don't know exactly but i think that it's kind of if i would say it would be 
uncertainly amazing, you know? <laughs> I have good expectations about the future, but I can't really do plans or I can't really do like, um, I just have to focus in the things that I'm working on and just keep to the, the same path and that's mm -hmm. it. Like, yes. okay. Yeah. That's great. And um, so just one more time that we, uh, we said how to stay in, in touch with uh, Camilo and Pedro. Maybe we can put that up. So uh, you're working together with your friends and you're also looking for new collaborators. Is that the case? Yes, we, well, right now we have uh, two spaces that we have tried to open up to people to come and collaborate with us. And we love sharing our knowledge and to keep having this growth. So anybody it doesn't have to be artists we've we've been collaborations with of course dancers actors we've done with musicians and even chefs. well yes chefs of course yeah and uh even normal people that just want to hang out and have fun have fun and in the end we even if they're engineers or they're business managers or mm -hmm. whatever we always have this way of understanding life as if as if life itself is art so yeah. everybody is always welcome and and uh, camila so they should send that i have here uh pm uh, avila at outlook.es yeah that's mine and then camila courtier at gmail.com so that's the best way for people to reach out to you yes. Instagram is oh, please. good so we have that uh, in the chat room so that everybody knows good and that's perfect so if there of course if there are any questions please uh, send us a, a chat a chat message or turn your microphone on um, for now we're going to uh, look at next week we have coming up William Derasiewicz who just published the death of the artist so it's going to be a slightly uh it's going to be a little bit of a different tone than today so uh as bill as he's known he will be presenting his book which was just released yesterday we are going to be talking about the situation for artists uh more or less of the generation of camila and pedro also the uh, older generations who have been working for a while the premise of the book is how, uh, because of the changes in society, uh, that the artists of today are not able to make a living, and they're not able to, um, they have to move into different, different areas of work because they're not able to live even a simple life from creating art. And then he's going to also suggest ways in which we can make the situation better. I believe uh, most of all through collective artistry like you were talking about at Rio Negro coming together uh, as a group and working uh, as an as an artist collective so we have that next week next Wednesday William Derasiewicz the death of the artist so now we must wish uh, Camila and Pedro we must wish them a happy trip back a good trip and uh, happy uh, return when we see each other a happy uh, next meeting uh, until then we will uh, be inspired yes in the meantime thank you so much for your engagement your enthusiasm your positivity your vibes sharing food with everyone sharing your art with everyone from uh, from everyone at tsh i can say really thank you for that and we will definitely miss you very much Thank you guys for everything. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey up to here. So Glad to hear it. We're yeah. amazing. Amazingly amazing happy. Happy, happy that we met you guys and we got to share all of this with you. Yeah. Same here, same here. Thank you so much. Thanks to you again. So thanks again to Camille and Pedro. Thank you uh, so much to my dear colleague, Lynn Ryman, uh, our co-moderator. Thank you very much to our superhero production team, especially Martin De Luca, who jumped in at the last minute to help us out. Uh, none of this uh, fantastic production will be possible without him. Uh, and our other people working also from as far as Spain and Florida. 
thank you very much to our production team, to our generous sponsors from where we are live streaming and live here in the auditorium, the Student Hotel Vienna, our generous sponsors, thank you so much for allowing us to reach, uh, to uh, get the message of Camilo and Pedro to us and to everyone else out there. Thank you, uh, most of all, of course, to you, our participants, without whom none of this would be worthwhile. So, live from the Student Hotel Vienna. Thank you very much for being with us tonight, for uh, participating, and we look forward to seeing you new next Wednesday, live from Vienna. Good night. Thank you so much.